Hey, folks. Oh. Get back out here. Zoom, zoom. There you are. Not touching the screen is hard. There we go. That's too far away. All right. A 90 minute walk today. Yep. I decided to walk around. Today. Unless you the lady yesterday about filming, just trying to keep up with her, she didn't get the chance. 
Hey there, I missed you. It's okay. Yeah, you want to come on down? Um, I'm in the dining room where we had Sunday school. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> I get the dining room because they, uh, they, you know, there's kind of like wires that space, <laughs> and I'm usually under eight, so it, it's okay for now. <laughs> right. Well, it's like the people warming up are like, look at me with my hat. Like they know I'm in the wrong place. I know. You could, you could have asked her. <laughs> All right. And that lady yesterday was the coach camera. Yeah, I didn't. I, so I'm not doing. I'm not doing the uh, clean party challenge. Oh, okay. I'm doing a uh, proverbs challenge with a different industry, and just doing this stuff. Well, the in first day was really tough. Yeah. Did you do the one by Amelia? Yes, yes. Yeah, so everybody's raving about that one. I'm like, oh, I'm missing something good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to keep up. You know, follow over. Yeah. <laughs> Dog trips. <laughs> just remember, just remember, this is all an invitation. Yeah, you don't have to go that crazy. crazy. You don't have to. iPhone did not work. <laughs> yeah, there you go. All right, so hey guys. <laughs> All right, I'm talking to the camera here too because I'm recording, so I'm gonna show you here what we've got for Simon. You can do a little broke, but okay. Oh, that's okay. So here's a uh live and we'll get lots of beer. So So today is the 17th, so we are in Proverbs 17. So we're going to go ahead and listen to it while we begin to move. So we're just going to stand here for a minute, roll our shoulders out, and just invite the Holy Spirit to come and on this map. Better dry cross eat in peace than a house filled with feasting and come breath. A wise servant will look the master to disgrace his son and Stress share the inheritance of the master's children. Squeeze the fire and test the purity of silver and gold. But the Lord tests the heart. The wrong doer is very evil for his stuff. Liars pay close attention to slander. Those who want the poor insult their maker. Those who rejoice at the misfortune of others will be punished. Now we are going to children of the fall down, suck your parents of the child of the children. Eloquent words are not fitting for a fool, even less a lie is fitting for a woman. A bride is like a lucky charm. Whoever gives one can prosper. Go ahead, love and love and love to the the well the separate close A single review does more for a person of understanding than a hundred lashes in the background. All right, so we're sitting up nice and tall. Peter, out front of you, just in a comfortable place. If these are bent, that's okay. 
Go ahead and do that to me and again. Now pull yourself up to chain. Pull yourself forward just to the place where you feel it's right. You would think of the evil. Take a breath. the other side. Now you're going to be like you're flying an airplane. Whee! Feel that stretch nice and on the side of your body. Big airplane. Are you stuck? No, it's, it's actually it's actually a hip stretch. Yeah. All right. Now if you can, lean towards the, uh, the same side, but deeper. Going all the way over this time. Hey guys, it's Ooh. Okay, back to the airplane. It is. It's a, it's a seated hip stretch. All right. Now we're going to we switch legs. Oh, we're in the Proverbs 20. And people's actions are all things. All right. So we're going to be set nice and tall. And we're going to reach over to uh, right hand side. See if you can get your body to be straight from your hip to your fingertips. Breathe. All right. Now we're coming up back and across. Wait, now we're going to drop, drop the left arm down. Now we're doing this air stretch. Feel it on your right side. Try to keep your shoulders out of your ears. It's just one of those things that naturally occurs for me. And reach across towards the left side. Breathe. Back to the airplane. Okay, now we're going to do a seated number four stretch. So your left leg can cross over your right. And if you're seated and you can do it, if you need to lay down, that's fine too, to get a little bit less stress. So increase the stretch on the side of your hip. Hamstring. Just enough tension to feel the presence of those tendons and muscles that are tight. Find that tight space and then just breathe into it. Hug it in just a little tighter, just a little deeper. Second hold. Don't hold your breath. Good. All right. Stretch that 
Everybody out by some walls. Everyone out by some walls. Cross the other leg. Seated for a stretch. Now my voice is back up again. <laughs> All right, lean into that or pull your hip forward. However you're doing it is fine. We have many, many options moving our body. Find that place where you have some tension and breathe. See if you can go a little deeper. Three, two, one, stretch it all right. So we're going to let's see. So as I was reading this, we're going to lay down into, have you done Pilates before? Okay, so we'll teach you some basics here. So kind of tilt. So this is kind of our basic place, okay? So focusing on the core is basically what we're doing. Okay? We're not pressing our low back into the mat. That's old school. <laughs> so neutral spine says that we're trying to keep that little, just a little space for our hands. So it causes all of you like crunches and stuff to feel really awkward. I've been trying this for years, but I think I've caught up again. So give yourself grace, but it does increase your focus. Um, so this core is just tight. We're focusing on trying not to rock all our hips, anchoring our shoulders and our hips. So go ahead. This is the tabletop position. So your hips and your shoulders are anchored. Your knees are up above your hips. We're just going to begin to march. And so what we're doing tonight is we're going to do twenty of one move, then fifteen, then ten, then five, and then we're going to work our way back up. <laughs> Okay, so we're doing 20 marches. Four is in while you're dropping those feet to march. Okay. One, two, more. Okay, back up, to knees up. Okay, now we're going to try to do a crunch. So lift those shoulders up off of the mat. Hold it for a second. Roll back down. Focusing on keeping that core. Kind of even, not rock and roll. Okay, we're going for 10 of these. Breathe as you squeeze. If you need to drop your feet down, that's okay. Sit up here. I'm going to show you it. 
So you're going to come up to kind of a tabletop. Core is still here. And then you're going to push your booty back to this stretch. And only go as far as you can without getting hurt. Okay, so we've got five of these. I'm at three. More space. Two. And three. All right, now stay on your bottom. And we're going to do five tricep dips. So if you have the strength to do it with your booty up, you can do the tricep dips like this. If you want to just lean back on your mat, we've got five of these. Four, three, two, one. All right, stretch. All right, so these are taking us longer than I thought they were. I thought we were going to work our way back up. <laughs> All right, so the next thing we're going to do, um, let's go ahead and double, triple up your mat, whatever you need for your quarter knees. All right, so we are going to a kneeling tabletop here. So your hands are under your shoulders, your knees are under your hips, that core, like you're zipping up a tight pair of pants. Back and engaged. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and point our right leg back towards the wall. And we're going to do five little circles. Trying not to rock, keeping yourself nice and still. Four, five, go the other way. So Pilates is a lot of really small movements with a lot of focus. <laughs> five. All right, go ahead and squeeze it in. And we're going to do a runner's lunge. So you're going to feel this across the front of your hip area. Tight hips cause us a lot of pain. So from here, you're going to put your right hand to the inside of your foot. And you're going to look up towards the ceiling. Stretch up. Oh, oh, put your hand on your outside. There you go. Looking up towards the ceiling, add an extra layer if you can do it. Not point that arm up. And breathe. All right. Now we're going to go up into the downward dog. So both legs here. You're pressing through the heels of your hands and the heels of your feet are trying to get up to go to, to the floor. Your booty is nice and high. Your head is trying to make an arrow to your butt. Okay. Now, if you can, go ahead and lift our right leg, point it as high as you can get it, and hold it. Three, two, one, drop it down. Okay. Now we're going to go back to tabletop leg circles with the other leg. All right. Focus on that core. Get your posture good. Point that left leg up and back at the wall. And we're going to do five little circles. Other way. I'm not as coordinated this way. <laughs> All right. Runner's lunge. Bring that foot up and forward. Lean into that. Try to keep your knee above your ankle so we're not putting a lot of pressure on our ankles. Stacking our joints upon each other gives us more strength and balance. 
All right, we're going to try that twisty move again. So don't need to get your hand to the floor. And then reach up with your right hand. Back down. And then we're going to go down to the downward dog and lift our left leg. Palms to the mat, heels to the mat, press, give your weight to the, to the floor, and then try to elevate that left leg. Feel a stretch on the back of the other leg. Okay, good job. All right, now if you want to unroll your mat, we're going to go face down. All right, let your head rest for a minute. Just breathe. All right, so from here, we're going to squeeze our shoulder blades together and try to lift our chest up off of the mat. Three, two, one, down. Okay, we're going to do that 10 more times. Nine. Eight. Squeezing those back muscles. You strengthen the front, you got to strengthen the back. Nine. Ten. All right. So now I'm going to do a knee plank. You can do a knee plank on your elbows or on your wrists. So. We're trying to keep our core engaged. Straight line from our head down through our tail. Three, two, one. Back down to the mat. This time your arms are going to go out real straight long in front of you. And we're going to do swimmers. So opposite arm, opposite leg, squeezing the backside. And you can do them as fast or as slow as you want. This is a safe place to swim. I guarantee it. Two. One. All right. Now, rock ourselves back up to the knee plank. And we're going to try to tap our shoulders. One. Core is engaged. If you can just step from one hand to the other, like you can do that. If you want to see if we can get 10 of them. Keep breathing. Anybody got a count? <laughs> okay. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right. All right. So from here, keep rolling on towards the side. All right, so on your side, your hips are stacked one on top of the other, trying to keep your head over your shoulders, over your hips, over your knees, over your toes. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is now we're going to bring our heels up in line with our tail. We're going to do 20 clamshells. So you're only lifting that top knee. You don't want to be rocking back and forth. You're trying to focus, keeping that core's hips 
Try to get those tight pants up while you're lifting. So as I was reading this uh, proper 17, I've been trying to notice like, because the Proverbs, you know, they're just like little snippets, little things that we're supposed to learn to be wise. Good. Okay. Rest. Now we're going to extend the top leg. And we're going to do 10 circles one direction. Okay. You don't want to be tipping over. If you're tipping over, your circle's too big. The other way, 10. So I just sort of been trying to pick out like, are there some words and some things, ideas that just keep repeating themselves? Two, one, good. All right, you need to stretch out. Do that. Because we're not done yet. All right. This one's, I like this one, it's fun. Okay. You lift your top leg just a little bit over the uh, hip level. Okay, zip that core in again. All right, now we're gonna bring the bottom leg up to meet it, and down. Okay, we got five of these. Good job. All right, now we're going to rotate that top here. We're going to kind of draw a triangle down here, up, back down. So we have five of these. I think that's fine. All right. So now, the last move on this side, we are going to kick the front foot forward, pointed toe. Now flex. Oh, that, I'm doing it off here. Flex here, point now, and kick it to the back. Flex, kick it forward. You're going to notice how tight your hamstrings are. Holy smokes, I can't do anything. Point your toe, kick it to the back. You're trying not to rock and roll all over. Right, it's concentrated. <laughs> All right, and you'll start to notice your hamstrings are going to loosen up. So we're going to try to get 20 of these. So one of the things that I noticed was that um, uh, the, the last few uh, have been a lot about our words, right? Lots of, lots of things about our words can get us into trouble. And so it is this proverb ends with wisdom. Basically, wisdom equals a few words and an even temper. That's to be wise. Do not use too many words and keep it even. Okay? Because otherwise, this is where we're going to end up. Ready? Switch. Yeah, you might. Here, I know I'm like, oh, feel that one. Woo! All right. Okay, lining it up again. Okay. We're all in line. Heels coming towards your bottom. We're just lifting the top knee. So when we are not even to third and we use too many words, these are the things we're starting to look like. Conflict. Slandering, gossiping, insulting. <laughs> okay, so we don't want to be fooled. That's what you know, property is all about the new versus the wise person. And so,
that was in there a lot was about the pride and joy of having children who follow wisdom and gain an inheritance versus the foolish who have to get rebuked. And uh, so I thought that was an interesting as that's part of my experience. I don't know if you have children that are ever in foolish behaviors. <laughs> right? So um, the Proverbs recognizes our state of uh, just frustration. <laughs> oh, stretch. All right, we have one more action song and then we're going back to stretch. So we're going to roll back onto our backs, get into that good position here. Shoulders are anchored to the mat, hips are even. Zip up the core. Okay, and we're going to go ahead and lift our feet up towards the ceiling, and we're going to do some scissor kicks. We're going to do 20 of these. Trying just to use the core. We're not going so far that we have to do too much. Crisscross. If you had a piece of paper, you were cutting it. <laughs> Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Drop your knees back down. All right. From here, your heels are in line with your booty, and a hand width or maybe more. So not super close. You're going to press your weight through your heels so you can lift up your toes. And as you take a big breath, you're going to lift your hips up. So we're not trying to like arch our backs, we're just trying to make a nice line from our shoulders to our knees. That core is still engaged, but we are squeezing that booty. And then we are going to roll back down towards the mat. One vertebrae at a time until our hips rest again. Core stays engaged that entire time. Okay, so we're going to do 15. Up, hold it, try to stretch nice and long. Don't hold your breath and roll back down to the mat. Lift.
Yesterday's Proverbs, Proverbs 16, talked a lot about honesty and especially in like business transactions. <laughs> so I'm like, wow, that's pretty important. Almost the whole chapter has all kinds of stuff about that. But it just made me think, you know, how how we trust businesses today, right? They're worried, they're honest. You know, like grandiose promises and they're not following through on them or say they're going to do it in the new shoddy word, right? It's not actually a good business name. Last one. Um, all right. Now we are going to do 10 frog kicks. So, feet and heels are going to come together. These are going wide, and four is still engaged, so it takes a second to kind of resettle. Okay, how do I do that with my knees in this position? <laughs> All right, now we're going to press and kick both the corners. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five. Center. 
wet feet, tailbone resting. And we are going to do a bridge over stretching legs to long. So you can get more length from your hips to your knees. Up, however, you want to be balancing. We're just trying to stretch the whole back out. See if you can gain any inches there. And roll back down and rest. Okay. Side twist, knee over. So I think we were doing lots of twisting here. Side twist, knee over. All right, let's do the number four. <laughs> So cross one leg over the knee, whatever feels comfortable here. You want to have one leg long, point and flex, rotate that ankle might feel good. All right, this is our cool down song. So I'm going to to talk a second. So as you stretch out here, I'm going to go quiet. So just do whatever feels good to your body, what still needs to be stretched. So I typically end with a, uh, a meditation moment where we just be still and be silent and listen to something or just let the words speak to us. And um, so the beginning of Proverbs, I think this fits in really, really well. So the first 10 chapters were almost like a letter to a uh, from a father to his son about how to be wise. And then it wasn't until chapter 10 that we started getting into what I remember as being the main part of Proverbs, these little sayings that were, you know, gonna keep you wise. And um, so the idea is not that these words are going to save us, right? It's faith, faith saves us. But these wise things help us to not have to be saved so often. <laughs> Okay, so um, in recognizing that there's no way that we can keep all of these, right? There's absolutely no way. We've already broken enough that it didn't matter anyways. And so what saves us is faith. And so this is kind of a spoken word um, meditation here. And it, the end is, it, it's just all about faith and how, how we really just have to depend and rest on God and God alone. So whatever feels good to you, still quiet, moving. What is authentic faith? The cultivation of an optimistic outlook on life with a kind of spirituality attached to it? A holy hoping for the best? Is this how you think of faith? Authentic faith is the confident assurance in events not yet seen. Faith is not a call to believe in things that God says tells you not to. Faith is not a mind stand in the dark. It is not a crossing of the fingers and hoping for the best. It is not a leap into apparent nothingness. It's a word that speaks of reason, careful, deliberate, intentional form. For upon what God and his promises. If you are absolutely gripped by the coming realities that have been promised to you by God, then how you live your life in the present will be radically different than if you did not possess that certainty. This is what faith is, my friends, positive certainty expressed in action. Authentic faith is not merely believing in God. It is believing God. Taking God and His Word, living in obedience to His revelation, whatever the cost, because you know, deep in your bones, that God will always do what He says, that His speaking is His doing. It is an abiding assurance in God and His promises that animates you to persevere in your obedience to. Do you wish to be a more consistently obedient, steadily persevering Christian? A stronger Christian? A more 
courageous and outspoken Christian, then you need to strengthen your faith. Your faith instinctively strengthens in direct proportion to the expansion of the object of your faith. You expand your understanding of the object of your faith, and faith itself will immediately fall. The object of your faith, if indeed you are a Christian, is Jesus Christ and all of his promises. Is your faith weak? It is only to the fact that you don't know the object of your faith. But when Jesus Christ becomes progressively bigger, there he is. Your understanding of who he is progressively conforms to reality. Your faith will become progressively strong. But how does that happen? By immersing yourself in the faith of the word of God. The need of Jesus Christ. The same powerful word that long ago brought the universe to life is the same word that can bring you to life and furnish you with the faith that is true. Christian. All right. I know. Why? That's my slippers. Yeah, so yesterday was my regular uh, group hike, and then today was a celebratory hike. One of our, uh, she's been here a couple of times. One of our friends turned 50, so she wanted to go hiking. <laughs> you can't move it. <laughs> no, not bad. You've graduated and you've stuck around, kids. <laughs> 